The greatest treasure California has ever produced has been its good and innovative people. When those people, especially the young, are taken from us tragically and prematurely, it's as though one of our beautiful ocean view houses has crashed down into the surf. When one after another of our young people are murdered, it's as if the whole of Yosemite's granite cliffs have come crashing down, rendering the once majestic valley below an impassable graveyard of shattered lives and broken dreams. Even though most of us try to preserve our sanity by becoming callous to unending bad news and murders, there are times when certain deaths take a hold of us, probably more so when they involve kids. Some of the most famous cases that collectively grieved this state in the last 11 years include Sandra Cantu, missing from Tracy and found murdered in 2009, Sierra Lamar, missing from Morgan Hill and presumed murdered in 2012. Madison Middleton, missing in Santa Cruz and murdered in 2015. Pearl Pinson, missing in Vallejo and presumed murdered in 2016. And Samantha Bustos, missing from Compton and murdered in 2019. These crimes and others like them caused seasoned law enforcement personnel to weep Though strangers to most of us, we remember their names and faces as a way to reaffirm their once bright lives before evil monsters ended them and their promise as California's best. This short list, however, underscores that many African American children who go missing are not given the same level of publicity. The faces of the lost became famous in print online and on daily news broadcasts as people held out hope that the missing would be found alive. In many cases, the public has reported sightings of the missing and these sightings were taken seriously. In some cases, a genuine look-alike person is seen and if located, is investigated to make sure of their identity. Way back during the Changeling case in Southern California, Missing boys were sometimes seen, and one was even made into a substitute for Walter Collins, who was never actually found. In some cases of mistaken identity, innocent persons have been convicted of crimes they had nothing to do with. In 1948, convict Raymond Edward Young escaped from a California prison work detail and landed himself on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. In the meantime, tough guy actor Jack Lambert, who has 116 acting credits on IMDb, including The Enforcer starring Humphrey Bogart in 1951, was stopped by the police again and again because of his remarkable resemblance to the escaped convict. Young was captured in November 1951, and in September 1952, Tab magazine got around to publishing a story on Jack Lambert as though his troubles were ongoing even though Young had been caught and sent back to prison. I think Lambert looks more like a felon than Young, and obviously so did Hollywood. All this goes to show it's not unusual that lookalikes should appear to any of us because many people share similar looks. Over many years I have closely scrutinized thousands and thousands of photos. And by scrutinized, I mean inch by inch with a magnifying glass. Sometimes a small, lone sign in the background can be the key to deciphering the location, which makes me happy. And sometimes I have come across fakes and reprints sold by some of the biggest vintage photo and postcard sellers on eBay, which makes me very disappointed in them because they do know better. As I have scoured old photos looking for details, locations, and anomalies, once in a great while I see a face who reminds me of someone else. Other collectors have done this too, and occasionally the resemblance of someone famous now to a person of the past can be startling. In 2019, an archived photo was found of a girl during the Yukon Gold Rush who looked eerily similar to Greta Thunberg. 
I have a look-alike photo of Greta too, but it's not nearly as close as the Yukon photo. Returning to the missing and murdered young people of California, it happened that one day I was stunned to see a face from the past that reminded me of one of our lost young people who inexplicably vanished and then was found murdered some years ago. She was a very sweet girl with several interests which gave her direction and the promise of a bright future. The photo you are seeing now is of the lookalike girls glee club at LeConte Junior High, Eagle Rock, California in 1931. The girl who owned the photo is marked on the back as Dorothy. I may be seeing things, but this 1931 girl has a very, very similar look to one of our more recent California murder victims. Photos of the latter were seen again and again in the media, and it is my understanding that on a couple of different occasions, while she was missing, people thought that they had seen her and duly notified police. Unfortunately, owing to circumstances that later developed, that would have been impossible since the innocent girl had been murdered soon after she went missing. However, it is possible that the people who contacted the police did see girls who looked like her. Here's the thing though, given today's online climate. I do not wish to say the poor girl's name, Maybe a few of you will see who I am referring to in the strong resemblance of the 1931 photo. Perhaps this obscure video will bring her memory back for some of you as we again remember her loss to her family, her community, and to California. The one consolation is that the police made an arrest in her murder and the jury convicted the awful and selfish person who took her life. Beyond that, we can only hope that juvenile caseworkers, psychiatrists, lawmakers, judges, and parole boards will continue to do all they can to protect society from the dangerous offenders of the Golden State. Thank you for all the times you have gotten it right and put in the long hours needed to bring about a conviction.